This video has a very important message. The fact that two random variables are dependent on each other, so not independent, does not necessarily imply that there is a correlation between these two random variables, because correlation is a linear concept, whereas dependence or independence is not restricted to thinking about linear relationships. So let us look at an example. Here we're having a joint probability distribution. We're having two random variables, x, which can take values 1, 2, and 3, and y, which can take values 1, 2, and 3. And we're having, let's do it like this, and we're having a joint probability distribution here. Of course, all of these probabilities, we can check that sum to 1. Okay, the sum of that is equal to 1. It's a joint probability distribution. To make that a little clearer, we have here a graphical representation of these probabilities. And you can immediately see that these are not independent from each other. Because if you see, if x takes a value of 2, so we are here x is equal to 2 in that middle horizontal line, then it is very likely that y takes a value of 3. Whereas if x takes either a value of 1 or 3, then it's very likely that y takes a value of 1 or 3 as well. So there's clearly dependence between these two variables. But it's not obvious whether that's a linear dependence or not. And for this we will now calculate a covariance and then a correlation. We'll do that all based on these joint probabilities. What we first need is uh, a measure of the marginal probabilities. Because perhaps, remember, in the end we want to calculate a correlation between these two random variables, x and y. And that is calculated as the, sorry, the covariance between x and y divided by the square root of the two variances. So the square root of the product of the variance of x times the variance of y. Okay, so we need to calculate all of these terms here, covariance, square root, uh, and the variances to calculate our result. So we need variances, and to calculate variances, we will also need expected values. So we need the marginal distribution. So we'll just calculate these here. We we'll just sum up across the we sum up across the rows, and we sum up across the columns to get our respective. marginal distributions. Of course, each of these distributions, so we, we can perhaps highlight these in yellow, that is a distribution, that is a different distribution, and the green area, that is our joint distribution. So we are seeing three different distributions here. The green one, the joint distribution, the orange one, the marginal distribution of y. Actually, that's not take here that is the marginal distribution of y and the uh, yellow one here that is the marginal distribution of x and then we need to change that here as well i just automatically copied these values across so we have the marginal distributions of x and y over here as well now, this will facilitate us calculating the expected value. So let's calculate the expected value of y. That is, of course, just the first outcome times its probability plus the second outcome times its probability plus the third outcome times its probability. So the expected value of y is 1.86 the expected value of x 
is calculated in the same manner. So we can actually just copy that formula and paste it here and then check that it does the right thing. Yes, it does the right thing. So the expected value of x is the uh, is 2.03. Now to calculate the variance, we can use the shorthand, perhaps a bit easier to calculate. So the variance of y is the same as the expected value of y squared minus the expected value of y squared. Okay, so that is one way to calculate the variance. So that means we need the expected value of y squared. So let's just calculate y squared here. That is just 1, 4, and 9. And x squared takes exactly the same values. It's better actually little x squared and little y squared because these are the outcome squared and then we want the expected value of that let's calculate that here expected value of y squared is y squared times the probability times the probability plus y squared times the respective probability plus that last y squared times the probability. So we have that, then we'll copy that formula just down here, and this will give us expected value of x squared. Here we go. So the expected value of x squared is 4.81. Let's double click the formula to see it does the right thing. It does the right thing. So that means we can calculate the variance, because the variance is that value minus that value squared. 0.88 of 4. And then let's also calculate the variance of x. That is this value minus this value squared. Okay, so now we have the variances which we need in our formula. Okay, so we need the variance of y and the variance of x here. Now we need the covariance. And the covariance can be calculated. Let's do that down here. The covariance can be calculated as the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. Okay, that is sort of the shorthand of one of the two ways in which we can conceptualize the covariance. It's the covariance, I should write that, here between x and y. So we have expected x, expected value of x and expected value of y. We already have here expected value of x, expected value of y. So we need the expected value of x times y. So the way how I like to, to do that in Excel is I'll replicate the table here but now I want to calculate x times y in that table so what is x times y here in this cell both x and y are 1 so the product is 1 here we have 1 times 2 the pro that's 2 1 times 3 that's 3 then we have x is 2 now 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 2 times 3 is 6 and then here, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 9. So these are the values of x times 9. To calculate the expected value of, so what we need is the expected value of x, y, this value here, okay. What we need is we need the product of that and that. So x times y times the probability of that. And we need that for all nine possible outcomes, and then we need to sum that up. So an easy way to do that in Excel is I'll replicate this table again. But now here I want to write the probability of x and y times x times y. So this is what I now want in that table. 
So what I need is that one times that probability, right? because in that table here, we have the probabilities of X and Y. And then I just need to copy that across and copy that down. So let's see that it does the right thing. Yes, it's four times that probability. That's right. Let's try this one as well. When you copy formula, you should always check that it does what you want. That's great. And that means that the expected value of x times y is equal to the sum of all of these fields, sum of these guys, because it's the sum of all the possible x times y times their probability. So that's 3.81. That means I can calculate the covariance here. So the covariance is that value minus that value times that value, or 0.0342. So now you know when we're using covariance as a measure of how variables are linear correlated, it's difficult to interpret that because it has funny units. It's much better to look at the correlation. That's we have the formula here. And the way how we calculate the correlation is we take that covariance and divide by the square root of the product of the two variances, the variance is here and the other variance is here. Okay, and what we get here is a, let me, um, so this is sort of the result we want, let me put a thick border around it. Okay, this is the result we are after the correlation between X and Y. So this is very small for this joint probability distribution, despite us having seen that the dependence between the two random variables is actually extremely strong. Okay, we can see an extremely strong correlation. And this is very close to zero. It's not exactly zero. And perhaps you can see why the reason the reason for that if you look at that joint probability distribution, it's not sort of soup, it's not 100% symmetrical. We can actually think about how would we need to change this distribution to get a cor correlation of zero. We'd have to make that very symmetrical. So here we see these big bars. They all already have a probability of 0.25. But here's some, uh, some non-symmetric stuff. We have that outcome is a little higher than this. If we actually adjust that, so if we were to change that to 0 0.05 as well, now our probability is less than one, so we may have to make that we're missing three percentage points. If we add that here, okay, now the distribution is super symmetrical, and this results indeed in a correlation of zero. So after having gone through this example, I hope it is, it is obvious to you that two random variables can be dependent on each other, like in this case, and yet there is no linear relationship, a correlation of zero. That is a very important message.